Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Ines Leia and welcome to the CreatorGalaxy.com space station. Here in space, we are experimenting with intergalactic filmmaking skills and visual effects. In today's video, we're going to be talking about shortcuts because they can save a ton of time. I thought this video would be a perfect opportunity because I recently received something very cool. And let me get it for you. Logic Keyboards sent me over this package. And in this package, I find a keyboard like this. So this is an editor's keyboard, especially designed for Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects. So I thought I'd give it a go. They also added our logo on there. So I will show that in a second. Uh, but first I'm going to install this because yeah, it's basically a reminder and a help for your hotkeys in Adobe After Effects and Premiere. And it looks super dope. It's like you mean real business when it comes to video editing. So kind of uh, tells your girlfriend like, hey, I'm a, I'm a professional here. And yeah, I need that keyboard. So here we have the keyboard. It looks really cool. Uh, and our logo is right here. I will show you that with some B-roll of the keyboard right now that you're seeing on top of this video. And I keep talking and it's kind of getting awkward, but I just keep going because I don't know how to stop. So right now I'm under my desk trying to figure out which wire is which because I have no idea and like a ton of wires. Do you guys have that problem as well? Like having too many wires, I hate wires, but I also hate wireless. So that puts me in a problem, right? Ugh, come on. So we have this wire, it's connected to this wire. Oh God, I don't find it. That cable seems long enough. That's nice. I ruined the entire thing here. Oh my God, I put, I took the wrong cable, I think. It does look clean on the office though. And it's a lot more silent. All right, so I just installed this keyboard. It looks pretty nice. It has a, it's backlit. It feels really good as well. It's quality made and also has some USB ports and stuff like that. Not going too much into detail, but you can check out uh, this keyboard with the link in the description below. It's for Premiere and Adobe After Effects. And yeah, I'll give it a go and see if I like it. So without further ado, let's jump into Adobe After Effects and let's see all these hotkeys I have been talking about so long. So right here we are in Adobe After Effects to create a new composition. I will just hold Ctrl and press N for a new composition, which is the first shortcut. Then to go back into the composition settings, you can press Ctrl K, which will get you back to this window where you can rename it or you can change the FPS and things like that. Okay. Um, then you can hold Ctrl and click over here to change your time code between frames per seconds and just your seconds, uh, one minute, two minutes. Uh, but like right here, you do see the frames, which is really helpful when you're working with visual effects scene and so on. And then with Ctrl K, I'm going to change um, my composition length to something like 10 seconds. And there we go. Then you can press Ctrl Y to create a new solid layer, which I use tons of times. And then Ctrl Shift Y uh, will go into the solid settings where again, you can change the color, um, maybe a little bit easier on the eye. Then you have Ctrl Alt Y, which will create a new adjustment layer. Ctrl Shift Alt Y will create a new null object. With the P on the keyboard, you will bring out the position and with R, you will bring out the rotation. With T, you will bring out the opacity. And with S, you will bring out the scale. But if you want all of these together and you will just want to see an overview, you can press P and hold shift while you're pressing R, T and S. And then you're just going to add on all these other elements on top of that uh, so you can all see them uh, together. V tool is your regular selection tool. And if you want your hand tool, you can press H on the keyboard. And now you can like drag around your clip to find specific parts. Or you can also press V on the keyboard with your selection tool, hold the space bar to move around like this. This is actually a method that I use a lot more than the H tool. I actually never press H on my keyboard to get my hand tool. I just leave it in my regular selection tool and hold the space bar when I want to navigate in Adobe After Effects. G on the keyboard is to reveal your pen tool and now you can start masking immediately. To create an ellipse, you can press Q on the keyboard and 
create an ellipse like this, or if you want to create a shape, you can hold Q and then you create a rectangle. Ctrl T is to reveal the text tool and now you can write something epic. Page down and page up is to go frame by frame and you can also hold shift to press page down and that will jump 10 frames forward or 10 frames backwards with the page up key. Home is to go to the beginning of your timeline and end is to go to the end of your timeline. If you have these layers selected and you want to pre-compose them, you can hold Ctrl Shift C and then move all the attributes as pre comped There we go. So right now our anchor point is right here and I want to center it to the center of the shape. So if I hold Ctrl Alt and then press the home key on my keyboard, that will center my anchor point right here. If you want to do it manually, you can press Y on the keyboard, which will reveal the anchor point tool. And then you can reposition the anchor point. And actually I want to have the other anchor point right here. So press Y on the keyboard and move this over um, to the side or something. If you want it to snap like right here, hold control and that will snap it to this or to this corner, to the center, to wherever you'd like to have it go. So for now, I like it to be in the center. Now we can press B on the keyboard and go to the beginning of our timeline, click on the stopwatch, move one frame, well, one second forward and move it to the right. So now we have a keyframe in between these. We can press K on the keyboard and J to go uh, between each keyframe. If you have many more, you can use these to navigate in between your keyframes. Now you have a smooth animation from left to right. Well, it's not smooth, it's actually very linear. So we have this animation which doesn't look really nice. We can select this and press F9 on the keyboard and that will add an easy ease effect to our keyframes which will now start fast and slow down. Of course, this is not enough. So we want to jump into the graph editor, but to jump into the graph editor, we can actually hold shift and press F3. That will open up the graph editor. Select these two points, bring this in and bring this in. And now we have a more drastic easy ease effect. So I'm going to import my logo in my composition and then you can hold Ctrl Shift Alt H, which will fit it to the canvas size and immediately uh, make sure that it's touching the edges. But let's say, okay, I have this logo with the black letters. I actually want to import my other logo with the white letters. So I'm going to import that, click on my logo in my composition, click on the logo in my project manager and hold Alt and drag it on top of each other. And that will replace it with the exact same values it already had before. Next, let's say you want to reveal all the keyframes in your composition. So you have many layers, uh, each with different uh, keyframes. Maybe this one is rotating a little bit. Uh, maybe this one is scaling up or down, doesn't matter. Just to have some keyframes. We can press U on the keyboard. That will reveal all the keyframes we currently have in our composition. Press them again and it will take it away. Let's say you have expressions applied to one of these. So press S on the keyboard. I'll click on the stopwatch time times 100. So this is going to be rotating right now, or actually, let's go for one. I actually wanted to do this on the rotation. I'll click here, time times 10. Okay, there we go. So we want to reveal only the expressions. We can press E twice on the keyboard. If we have a camera in our scene, we can press A twice to get all the camera options. Same as for the light settings and stuff like that. If we do it on a normal layer, this will bring up the anchor point. Okay, so let's bring back these position keyframes right here. Let's say we want to add another one that goes like this and then another one that goes down. And now we have this weird animation just like this, doesn't matter. We want to make this longer or shorter. We can select all of these and hold Alt on the keyboard and drag them longer or shorter. And that way it's going to do this thing. Let's say we want to mask out our logo here. So we're just going to disable this shape. Go to my logo and choose the ellipse tool. Control to start from the center and shift to make a perfect circle. So we have our logo. We can press M on the keyboard to reveal the mask options. Here we can subtract it or add it. We can press F on the keyboard for the feather. So we can add a feather to our mask and we can press M twice on the keyboard to reveal all the mask options. And here we can expand it or decrease it and stuff like that. 
If you want to preview your timeline, you can press zero on the keyboard, which will preview your timeline. Okay, so if you hold shift and you press zero on the keyboard, it's going to render the entire thing, but skip one frame every frame. So that means it's just going to have like a 12 FPS if you're on a 24 FPS timeline, but you get an idea of the entire animation and it just takes half the time to render out your entire timeline. You can go to the back here of the shape layer and hold Ctrl Shift D to split this layer. We can delete this part and move this over. If we wanna go to the beginning of this layer, we can press I on the keyboard or O on the keyboard to go to the end of this. To duplicate this layer, we can hold Ctrl and press D on the keyboard to duplicate it and then move it over. And now we have the exact same copy right here. If you have a lot of layers in your composition and you just want to navigate in between those, you can hold Ctrl on the keyboard and press the arrow up key or down key to navigate through these. Let's say you have all these details here in your shot and you just don't want all this information to be shown just so you have a clear overview of what's going on. You can hold Ctrl Shift H to hide all of these and then hold Ctrl Shift H again to reveal these again if you want to see them again. You can also press Ctrl R on the keyboard to reveal these rasters. These you can use to actually start designing on a composition and bring them out here. You can also hold Ctrl and point comma to remove these or actually enable them again so you can toggle in between these as well. Currently we are in third resolution mode. If you hold Ctrl and press J on the keyboard, you go to full resolution, hold Ctrl, Shift, J, you will go to half and Ctrl, Shift, Alt, J, you will go to a quarter resolution. If you have a very big timeline and you want to search a specific thing, you can hold Ctrl, press F on the keyboard and search for the logo. Here we have it. If you want to export just this frame to let a client review it or something like that, you can hold Ctrl, Alt, S and that will immediately bring it to the render queue. You can change it to a JPEG sequence and save your image. All right, and that's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I also have actually another video, which is for working very efficiently in Adobe After Effects. And I actually really enjoyed all the tips I was giving there. Some of them I even forgot and I'm going to re-implement those right now. That video has a ton of awesome information. I will just link that right here in the video. Definitely go and check it out. And apart from that, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Also be sure to check out our website, creatorgalaxy.com. We have a bunch of awesome tools for any kind of digital creator and if you buy something from our website that also helps to support our channel and apart from that i hope to see you in the next one take care and stay safe